These words are the title of my presentation, <laughs> followed by my name. Um, now, now, now you'll, you'll know what it doesn't say by Jason Roberts, because in early 21st century San Francisco, you don't need to do that. It's implied. Now, I just spent 15 seconds telling you the obvious, and here's why. I am a writer. I'm a writer of books, mostly nonfiction books, mostly historical nonfiction books, which means I'm also an historian kind of deal with the past. Now, there are a lot of challenges in terms of dealing with the past. Um, there are texts that are lost. There are texts that are biased. Uh, translations that are wrong. Some things that can't be translated, like this is the Voynich manuscript. And there's lots of lost content. But the worst thing is that encapsulated in the phrase, it goes without saying. <laughs> so much history actually is lost to us, not because the historical record is gone, but because it was never in the historical record in the first place. <laughs> Why waste useful papyruses or anything like that to say what's completely obvious, what's common knowledge? These are Roman dodecahedrons. These are these 12-sided metal and stone objects that we find in hundreds of ancient Roman sites throughout Europe. What are they? We don't know. We have plenty of theories. They might be fishing weights, they might be musical instruments, they might be uh, early Dungeons and Dragons. But the, <laughs> the point is that we have to guess because the Romans, they were so commonplace that the instructions on how to use them were commonplace. Here's garum. Now the Romans loved garum. It's this condiment. They used it on everything. It was their mayonnaise and mustard and salt and pepper all put together. Their entire economy was built around it. But we don't know what it was except for the fact that it seems to have involved fish. <laughs> now we have plenty of Roman recipes. In fact, the word recipe is Latin for first you take, like first you take a fish. But of the hundreds, if not thousands of recipes, none of them is for the most common object. Here's another thing. Um, there, in the Bible itself, there's this character called the disciple whom Jesus loved, which you think would be kind of a, a big deal. And Jesus thought he was a big deal. He sat next to him in the Last Supper. In fact, at some point, Jesus puts his head in his lap. He's a very important person. He was adopted by the Virgin Mary. He's the one who discovers the resurrection. He's granted immortality, and he's one of the authors of the Bible. But for the other authors of the Bible, they thought nobody needed to say who he was. His identity went without saying. <laughs> now, here's a big question. Why are they called buggies? When you think about it, that's kind of a strange name for a horse and carriage. So I thought it might be a very interesting answer. So I posed it to the champion of interesting answers, ChatGPT. <laughs> now, it, it, says, it says here um, that um, it originally referred to a frightening specter of hobgoblin, blah, 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 refers to a small lightweight vehicle associated with blah, blah, blah. The point is that that was all wrong. I asked the question because I knew that there is no answer to it. And when I, when, and then it actually started hallucinating the answer. Now, for that reason, I believe I need to propose something called DOI, the Depository of Obvious Information. For future generations, let's create, let's say the unsaid. That idea that it goes without saying is not necessary because honestly, uncommon knowledge becomes common knowledge and vice versa. Most importantly, here's a question. What is the FAA definition of flight? See, some things aren't quite trivial. It turns out there is no definition for flight. There's a definition for flight time which begins when, when a vehicle pushes forward for the purpose of flight, but there is no actual definition of flight, which is interesting because it turns out that, you know, qualified pilots need certain degrees of flight time. Your pilot could have 100 degrees of flight time, but actually no five minutes of actual flight. Or here's another example, a sudden death. Uh, I looked on Wikipedia, I looked everywhere on the internet, there's no definition that describes that no actual death is involved. <laughs> and in fact, I asked this question, what does the phrase, my ultimate team encountered sudden death mean? <laughs> Something went wrong. Ah. <laughs> if it's going to confuse AI, it's going to confuse future generations. So, you know, uh, uh, this is the thing. Confusion is actually useful. Instead of trying to gloss over these things, instead of having AI you know, hallucinate the answers, how about it identifies where those gaps in knowledge are? It could work with us to identify those gaps and basically create the depository of ob obvious information. So join me, won't you? 
join me in saying, maybe you don't know what I mean, maybe you want to. Maybe we can bridge that gap. Thank you very much. <laughs>